Okay, so on this channel I cover cheap tech. Well, it's not actually cheap. It tends to be older flagship stuff that has come down in price because it becomes used and maybe is two or three years old before the time I pick it up anyway. As a student, it makes sense to me. I don't have an awful lot of money. I'm kind of saving the environment a little bit. Not whole by myself, but there we go. And because why not? Waste not, want not. Anyway, a company wanted to send me out this thing, which is an Android tablet, a very cheap Android tablet, a sub £100, it's a 10 inch tablet, and on paper it looked pretty good. So I said yes, and uh, I agreed to let them send it out to me, let them, uh, so that I could review it and make a video for you guys. But then I got it out of the box, and things started to go pretty badly from there. I'm going to cover this like a normal review, so let's talk about the design and the build quality. This thing is unapologetically plastic. It's plastic on every side, the buttons are plastic, the port surroundings are plastic, in fact even the screen is plastic. Yeah, the, the film on the front of the screen, what would normally be Gorilla Glass, or at least glass, is plastic. You can scratch it with your fingernail. We'll get back to that, but the branding on the back is really ugly. Like, the logo doesn't look too bad, but the text along the bottom is, well, for one, huge, and for two, a really old looking font, kind of like the OG Sony logo. The speakers on the back are, I suppose, well placed if you're listening to music from behind your tablet, but I do actually like the tactility of the buttons. They're fairly clicky, even though the volume rocker is just out of rocker, and it's not two separate buttons, which I like to see. We do have a headphone port, we have a micro SD card slot, we've got micro USB, which I do get, I mean, on cheaper devices, micro USB is still gonna be a thing, but I mean, it's just made me think of how much I prefer Type-C on these things. In fact, if you go and watch a video a couple of years back from me, I explain why I didn't like Type-C. But now, I'm all about it, and it's a shame when I see a device like this that doesn't have that. Yeah, all the interactivity in the ports, that's all on the top. Every other side is completely blank, and, uh, well, I'm glad it is, pretty much. It's pretty flexible. Like, that is a significant amount of flex for something you'd consider a tablet, and it does creak, and the build quality isn't fantastic. But what's really annoying is that the bezels are fairly big, and I don't necessarily mind that in a tablet. But when you look at the listing on Amazon, the, I, I don't know if maybe it's just my eyes, but the bezels seem a lot thicker in person than they do on the listing. Kind of misleading. If I gave this to a child, I don't expect it would last more than about five minutes because it is kind of built that badly. I do think it would be okay in a static environment, which we'll talk about a bit later, but in an environment where you're moving this thing around, which I guess is what a tablet is for, no, I don't think it's going to hold up that well. The screen is a bit meh, because whilst it is 1280 by 800 which isn't really a great resolution for a 10 inch screen, it doesn't look that bad. The colours off axis look fine, like the colours are fine, the responsiveness is okay, I mean, the overall kind of look of the display isn't too bad unless you're reading fine text where you need that sharpness because that does tend to degrade. The one thing that really annoyed me though is that I guess it's because it's got that front plastic cover. Off-axis viewing angles are worse, not in colours, but in the blurriness. Like some text becomes more fuzzy off-axis and I'm not sure how easily I'm going to be able to pick that up on camera but it does look terrible in person. So the display itself not too bad, but the plastic covering kind of degrades that quite a lot. Like from afar, I think this would be fine, but up close, this thing just really isn't that good. And I suppose with a tablet, you are using it up close. The one thing again that really annoyed me about this specific trait of the tablet is that in the listing, the Amazon listing anyway, the text looks and the, the video looks far clearer than it is in person. Again, misleading. It's not going to look like that. I think that's kind of false marketing and I really don't like seeing that happening. So that is probably one of the biggest problems with this is the false marketing. But we'll get back to that in a second. Display is one of the better parts of the tablet overall. So it kind of says something about the rest. The camera? What cameras? I mean... There are two cameras, one front, one back. I don't really need to say any more than that. They are potatoes. Battery and charging is a strange one. This is reported as a 9,000 mAh battery in IDA64. Not sure how much I really agree with that or necessarily believe that. It doesn't last me all day and it's not gonna last anyone all day. It's not great on battery life, although it's not as bad as like an old used tablet. This may get two or three hours of use before it starts dying. It has quick charge, but it's not really that quick but 
it's not slow either, so I'm just going to leave that as just fine. What I did like about it, though, is it came with a UK power adapter, which is something that rarely ever happens for me. When I order an item, especially a cheap item, I tend to get the EU adapter. So I'm glad they even gave me the right UK power adapter to charge this thing, because that worked fairly well. But as I said, battery life isn't great, so it's one of those ones that you might want to leave plugged in, or only use it very rarely. The software seems to be, well, the best part of this tablet, to be honest. There isn't really anything extra. There aren't any bloat applications. It feels stock. It looks stock. I can't tell if there's a custom ROM over it. And it is running, reportedly, Android 9.0 Pi, so it's new as well. Don't think that's ever going to get updated, but I'm glad that it has it anyway. But then we get to probably the worst part about this tablet, and that's its performance. It is diabolical. I mean, it is worse than the build quality. It is absolutely disgusting. The problem with it is that it's using four very, very ultra high efficiency, so high power efficiency cores in its system on a chip, which I still can't figure out what it is, but it's using four Cortex A35s, which are very, very, as I say, ultra low power, so meant for kind of really low power stuff, something that's not necessarily going to be a tablet where you're trying to drive video and play games and all sorts. This is the slowest thing I've ever used. It's slower than that Galaxy S2 that I used a few years ago. It's, it is genuinely very, very slow. It's got two gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. I'm not sure really how how much to, to say about that. I think the 64 gigs of storage may be useful if you want to use this as an oversized external like memory stick or something, but it is genuinely like awful. A few use cases that I thought this could be, I suppose, attributed to. One is like a wall clock, like a digital wall clock or a photo frame, like a digital photo frame, because they tend to have worse displays than this, so this wouldn't be too bad for one of those. And it's very thin, so you could probably kind of commando strip it to a wall or something. And one of the things I wanted to use this for, and I said this might make you laugh, is I wanted to use this as a digital dash on my SIM rig. So I connected it up and it actually uses a server on the computer and then it uses the web browser to connect to a page that refreshes to give you your tachometer and your, your speedo and stuff like that. And it lagged in the browser. And that made me kind of just, well, that kind of summed it all up for me, really. The performance was so bad that it couldn't even run something that simple in the browser, which my phone does just fine, and even cheaper phones, they do that just fine as well. So that kind of just summed it all up. This is a ripoff. This is not something that I recommend, and it's ge not generally this Vankio tablet, but any cheap tablet. I mean, I don't recommend any of them because they're just going to be thrown away quickly because... You're going to buy it and a few weeks later decide it's a waste of money. It's a paperweight. Therefore, it's actually quite bad for the environment because it's going to use resources to make. And you're also getting rid of plastic and other things that cannot be recycled. So that's an issue as well. Secondly, it's just a waste of money for the consumer. £100 isn't really a lot of money for a giant tech purchase. But similarly, £100 is not pocket change to a lot of people. It's certainly not me. So £100 is a lot of money to put or let's say waste on something that you're not going to keep for very long. Some examples of alternatives that I recommend over this include a used iPad mini 2. It's around the same price of £100 and no it's not going to blow your socks off but at the same time it's going to be faster, it's going to have a much better screen, better cameras, I mean the whole thing is just better in general and you've got iOS which should be updated for at least another generation yet. Or even an old second gen Nexus 7 and yes I know it uses a Snapdragon S4 Pro but seriously it's faster than this thing. It, uh, yeah, don't even bother with this. Uh, an old second gen Nexus 7 is going to cost you £50 tops, so that versus this is a bit of a bargain. Oh, and the dodgy reviews. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, this is alleged because I have seen how they kind of market this thing. I'm pretty sure they're paying people to review this on Amazon, and I'm not going to say where I got that information from, but at the same time, I am going to make people aware of it because that's how this thing has like a really high rating on Amazon as a review. Uh, it doesn't have many reviews, but it does have fairly high rating ones. I believe this to be a fake review device on Amazon, and that is how they are selling their products. So yeah, any company that does that is dodgy and is not worth my time. Anyway, that's enough about me uh, ranting about that tablet. It's just awful, so bad. Don't even bother looking at one. And again, cheap tech is one of those things which is just like, is very hit or miss. Very few companies get it right, and when they do, people like OnePlus, they just do really, really well. But for a small company like Vankyo, absolutely not.
Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Please do like, dislike, comment, and subscribe if you're new around here and never miss a video like this one. And if you're still here, tell me in the comments what tablet you would recommend for the same kind of price, around 100 pounds or 120 euros. Please check out all the links in the video description. There won't be one to buy this tablet. I'll probably leave some alternatives in there via Amazon. And I wanna give a massive shout out to my patrons because you guys are still supporting me. So I really do thank you for that. Anyway, I've been Ryan Thomas and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.